very dear brothers and sisters, when you think of our Lord Jesus Christ, I don't know about you, but I think of the humble king, the king who is like water. Water always goes to the lowest place in order to give life and serve. On the contrary, the opposite would be like hot air. Uh, you put it in a balloon and it rises up. It's puffed up. It's prideful. It's egocentric. It wants to be first. I'd like to go to the book of Chronicles, the first reading today. And I'd like to speak about this book of the Old Testament, Chronicles. I don't know if you're very familiar with the Chronicles or have read them any time recently, but they're really a fascinating book. Together, Chronicles and the books of Kings, one and two Kings and one and two Chronicles form a historical uh, story, so to say, from the point of view of the priests and scribes of Jerusalem, of the kings of Israel. The Chronicles sadly say that most of the kings were really bad. Now, there was a few good ones in there, but there was a lot of really bad kings. And so our first reading today is from the second book of Chronicles, and uh, it's the very last chapter of the second book of Chronicles, chapter 36. If we go back several verses before the uh, reading that we have uh, read, it will describe the king of Israel, the last king before the exile. His name was Zedekiah. Zedekiah it says here, was 21 years old when he became king. That's very young, 21. And he reigned 11 years in Jerusalem. So he was from 21 until the age of 32, king of Israel. And then it says, the next verse, he did what was evil in the sight of the Lord. Another bad king doesn't help Jerusalem, doesn't help the people. A bad king. Uh, and he did not humble himself before Jeremiah the prophet. So I think that was the key. He did not humble himself. When one is humble, one listens. One obtains wisdom. One takes on the very image of the Messianic King, the Great King, our Lord Jesus Christ. When one is humble, one is able to see the things of God because God Himself is humble. And let's continue to, to see what it says about the, the, the King Zedekiah, the last king, again before the exile of 70 years. Uh, he became stiff-necked and hard hardened and hardened his heart rather than to return to the Lord, the God of Israel. So kind of a dire situation. Uh, he, he became hardened of heart. So in effect he was doing his own thing. He was not perhaps praying as he should. He was not putting God first. He was not realizing that uh, his authority, his king, his power, came directly from God and was conferred on him with great responsibility. And so, then it continues in first reading. Uh, Likewise, all the princes of Judah, the priests and the people, you can imagine imitating the king because that's what we tend to do, we imitate those oftentimes in authority or those we're very close to. Um, likewise, all the princes of Judah, the priests, 
And the people had a treachery to treachery, practicing all the abominations of the nations and defiling the Lord's house, which he had consecrated in Jerusalem. So when we see a, a situation where the, all the elders, the princes, even the priests were, were, were doing these really serious sins called abominations. They were worshiping false idols, practicing some of the practices of, of the foreign nations, and uh, even one of those practices would be to uh, offer children as sacrifice and stuff like that. It kind of rings with some things that are happening today, you know, how people are sidetracked into a worldly, a secular way of life, a secular way of thinking. And, and sadly, pride begins to soak in, enter in so subtly. And so we see that uh, God had sent prophet after prophet to the different kings. And again, there were a few good kings, but most of them uh, were not so good. They, they, they did sin. They, they led their people astray. They imitated the gods of the other nations, even sometimes offering worship to foreign gods in the very temple of Jerusalem, dedicated to the one Lord God of all the earth. So a very sad situation. And so what happened? Prophet after prophet warned. Uh, finally, it is said that uh, God became upset uh, it continued until the Lord's anger against his people blazed up beyond remedy. The cup was full, in other words. And so he permitted the, the king from Babylon, Nebuchadnezzar, to wage war against Jerusalem, conquer the city, and uh, deport the people. It was a sad, dire situation. In the psalm, it says, uh, by the waters of Babylon, there we sat and wept. They asked us for songs, songs of Zion, of Jerusalem. But how could we sing the song of the Lord in a foreign land? They were exiles again, almost like in Egypt, because of their sins, the, the accumulation of sin after sin. Now I want to stop right here and turn to the true and wonderful King who we worship and adore. Our Lord Jesus Christ. We're dressed, and we can, and I are dressed in the color of, of the spirit of joy, because walking with Him now, halfway through the forty days, we're closer to uh, the victory that Jesus gave us in His humility as the true King of Israel than when we were when we first began our journey. There's much, there's much prayer, there's fasting, there's charity, works of honesty. There's different things we do. Little things, sometimes big things. But it's all in the spirit of walking with Jesus through these 40 days and arriving with Him to that pastoral mystery, that day. when with Jesus, like with Mary, we will be at the foot of the cross. Like Mary, we have faith that Jesus is giving His life for us. And that he's going to suffer and die, he will be buried, and then on the third day he will arise, having achieved victory over sin, death, and the devil forever. Our king is a humble king. Jesus, the eternal son of the heavenly father, sharing the unspeakable riches of the glory of the father before the world began, humbled himself, came down from heaven, left his glory. It's a wonderful example of this. He left all of that glory, all the glitter, we might say, because God is glorious. And he became one of us. He entered and became a member of the human race, like us in all things to sin. He was born in a humble way, in a normal way, within a family. He had a mother. He had Joseph, his father. He grew up among us. Who would have imagined this was the great king of Israel, the one who would inherit the throne of his father David? He entered into Jerusalem after preaching the gospel, 
lost three or three and a half years. He entered into Jerusalem on a donkey. He entered in in the most humble, insignificant way, unassuming way. This was typical of our Lord, the humility of God. How could how, how can one defeat and overcome temptations or sins of every sort, or sometimes those sins that root themselves and seemingly don't want to go away? How can one overcome them? The key is the humility of Jesus. He was humble. And because of his humility, and because he was without sin, he was able to undo, undermine, and conquer the pride of the evil one. That horrible serpent, the devil, who was given all power over all the angelic host in the beginning, but then in his pride wanted his own kingdom. But Jesus has undermined that kingdom. He has conquered it by his humility. Because that's the one thing the evil one cannot uh, uh, stand. He cannot be associated with anything that smacks of humility. Here we are with Jesus. We're midway through Lent, like the water is poured out and it flows down to the lowest place. Here we see Jesus taking the lowest place, and yet he's the greatest in the kingdom. He is the Lord of all. He is the only Savior of the world. There is no other. He is the Lamb of God. He is the Good Shepherd. He is the one who has been willing to freely lay down his life for you and me, his sheep, in the whole world. What a wonderful king we have. Not like those kings mentioned in Chronicles, or this last king, Zedekiah, just 21 years old, with wonderful opportunities, a lot of energy, because he was young, to achieve wonderful things for his people. He became a bad king, puffed up with pride, doing his own thing, and yet Jesus, as king, overcomes all of this, all the sins of the world. And he overcomes all of our sins. Dear brothers and sisters, let us love our Lord. Let us come before him humbly, because he is humble. Let us continue to walk with him during these rest or remaining 40 days and 40 nights.